So today we're going to turn our images of the moon into a map that shows the true chemical geological composition of the lunar surface. So to our eyes when we look at the moon we see basically a black and white image. We've got these darker regions, these are called the seas, the lunar seas, and we've got this whiter region, these are the highlands, typically more heavily cratered. But that's it, we've got no colour, we've just got black and we've got white and we've got different shades of grey in between. But hidden in the data, hidden in the colour data of the camera, we've actually got different reflectivities from that different soil composition, chemical composition of the lunar surface. So the other night we went out and we imaged four planets in one night. We had Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune and Uranus and I also took some pictures of the moon using the digital camera. So there's the moon coming through on the camera. Hopefully that's going to look for you. Let's see if you can explain it. There we go. And as you can see, my battery's about to die. So I've got it on manual mode. So it's on manual. And because we're using a big old C11 with its F10 focal ratio, we're actually quite high powered. So as you can see, that only fills part of the field of view. Oops, I'm just taking a picture. So what I've had me to do, of course, is move around the moon pointing the telescope you know up at the top top left top, you know moving my ray around and what I'll do is we'll mosaic those together afterwards I've taken I think it's about five of each uh, part of the moon and what we'll do is we'll stack those together because if you stack signal together that reduces the noise means we can sharpen them up but it's quite a nice pleasant way to finish looking at the night sky So you don't need to have a big telescope to do this project, you can use any telescope you've got, a telephoto lens, take a number of images of the moon, even if it doesn't fill the field of view, stack them together using the same methodology and you'll have a colour image of the moon's surface. So I have a, an image of the moon I took with my 4 inch refractor a few years ago and we're going to turn this grey image of the moon into a coloured geological map of the lunar surface. So let's put the single image into Photoshop. File, open. So I like to work with the layers on. So we're going to use window, make sure you've got your layers on and that appears on the right hand side. So the first thing we want to do is do an auto color that takes out the refractive effects of the optics, the atmosphere, the camera's own white balance. So if we go enhance, auto color correction, there we have a balanced image on the histogram. Now a single image is always going to be quite noisy so if we zoom into the pixels you can soon see that there is this sort of grey, grainy, looks like some sort of sprinkle of salt and pepper onto the surface. So a simple way to get rid of that if you've only got a single snap like this it goes filter, noise, dust and scratches and leave it on one pixel and that just smooths from pixel to pixel any sharp gradient differences. So okay that's control zero. So bring that back out to the full image. So there's our slightly noise reduced colour balanced image of the moon. And what we're going to do now is add a series of colour enhanced layers, colour saturation layers. So we click up here on this thing, this adds an adjustment layer. And the good thing about adding an adjustment layer is it doesn't change the base layer, our original image. So if I go create new, and it usefully looks like a moon as well. And we want hue saturation. Now we can do layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. I just find it easier to press this button here. So either use layer, new adjustment layer, or click on the half moon, create new fill adjustment layer, hue saturation, and we're going to add 20%. Now what we could do actually, is just boost it straight away, up to I don't know, 80% or something like that. And you can see straight away, I zoom in, we're bringing out that colour difference. We've got this sort of orangey yellow, we've got blues, we've got some quite strong blues in this region. And that's showing you that different, what used to be a black and white image of the moon is now becoming a geological map. You see the rays coming off the craters here and the different types of composition, orange, yellows, blues, and these white highland regions. But you get, again, you get this grainy, peppery look. So what I prefer to do is say do 20% and that gives it a much gentle enhancement. But what we'll do is we'll add 
another one. 20%. I'll add another one. And I keep on going until we've got five or six. And that gives a much smoother texture than having just one massive jump. So you can see there now, we've got these orange yellow regions. And what I want to do now is show you how I'm going to do a much more higher resolution, much better noise control image. But what I did, if you look at the five pictures I took, I've taken one, two, three, four, five pictures of the top, one, two, three, four, five, six pictures of the middle region. And I took a number of pictures of different parts of the lunar surface. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack those together and then that will boost the signal, the noise will average out, and I'll get a much cleaner image. So to do that, I use a freeware program called AutoStackit. Now there are other stacking processes you can do in Photoshop. AutoStackit though is much better priced at no pounds. So we're gonna do a file open. So let's open image files. And we'll open up the first five, one, two, three, four, five. That's the North Polar region of the moon. And then we'll open these all up in turn. So I'm going to open up all five of those. Right, so there's the picture opened up. The first thing we have to do then is tell it to be in surface mode. It's not a planet. It doesn't have a dark region all the way around it. We've got a surface. And I'm going to make sure then that the anchor position, there it is. So you have the auto stack. It uses that little green square and works out that's going to be the center of the image. So it's got a nice contrast between this bright region and these darker regions. So that's OK. I've got noise robustness, 4, 5, that's fine. And you must tell it to be in RGB mode. You don't want it to be debearing a planetary camera, what we'd normally use for a planetary camera. It's really, it's absolutely suddenly chucking it down. I don't know if you can hear that over the microphone. I hope not, because it really is raining quite hard. So let's press Analyze. It knows where the centre of the image is from the green square. It knows that we are shot in a colour camera, so RGB mode. We've got five frames to stack, and it's what it's first doing is working out, making sure that all the frames line up correctly. Excellent. So it stabilised the surface. What I'm going to do now is put a whole load of alignment points. So what AutoStacker does is it looks at the image, breaks it down into little squares, and works out what the sharpest one of those is, and then stacks those together. So poor old AutoStacker has 1,250 alignment points. So it's broken the lunar surface down into these little squares. I've used multi-scale, so I get different size squares. That reduces the chances of mosaicing and I've got a minimum brightness of 30. And that means I haven't got squares up in the black area. We don't need to align on the black background. We only really want to use the lunar surface itself. I'm going to tell it to stack 100%. So 100% is fine. I could have shot 20 and only stacked the best 10 or something like that, but 100% is fine. And then I will hit stack. So while we're processing that, then let's just talk through. Auto stack it then is finding the sharpest frame. It's making sure that all those images line up correctly. It's breaking them down into those little squares, recombining them together as a stack. So poor old auto stacker has then crunched, what is it? 1,250 alignment points. So stacked those five pictures on top of each other with much reduced noise in the images. So the next thing then is to open up the next set of images, we'll stack those together, and we'll create this stack of stacks ready to mosaic together. My poor laptop though is really struggling with recording at the same time as doing the stacking. So I'm actually going to pause the recording and I will join you after I've stacked each one of those together. So Auto Stacker has finished its crunching. It took so long I had to go make myself another cup of tea. And what we've got then, if you look at the screen, I've got one, two, three, four, five different images of the moon surface. And the key point is they're a stack of five. 
So it's five images, one on top of each other, mosaic together, and from that we will then produce a whole disk image of the moon. Now I like to use a program called Microsoft Ice, but when I was researching this video, I've noticed that they're no longer supporting this Microsoft. You can't download it from the website. There are other websites to download it from, and I leave it up to you to decide whether you want to do that. I found it works flawlessly. I've used it, I don't know, for years, more than five years, and I really like it. So I suggest using it, but there are other mosaicing software out there. So I go new panorama from images. So as you see here on the on the folder, it's got AS for auto stack at P100. So that's 100% of the frames to stack. If we had 50%, I don't know, you'd have P50 there. So auto stack at P100 is where our files are. Let's go into Microsoft Ice. So we've got our 100% our files, so stack of five and five. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you can see that we've got top left, bottom, left, right, middles. So we'll open them all. Open. Just wait there, loaded in. And I literally click stitch. And it has a thing, works out how they all orientate together. It opens it. So there we have our full disk of the moon. I don't crop it here, I'll export it. And I'll export it as a TIFF. Export to disk. Save that as TIFF. Open up Adobe Elements. File open. So the first thing we're going to do then is make sure we've got a black background. So I'm going to duplicate the layer. Edit, fill layer, make it black. Okay, there we go. So we now have a nice black background. Now if we zoom in, if you remember before, we had lots of pixels, lots of grey peppery if we zoomed in. So not only am I using a bigger telescope, I've also stacked my images. So I've got, now got a much better resolution. So I'm going to come back out. So I'm just going to shuffle up the moon and my preferred method is to use a high pass filter. This boosts up the contrast without necessarily disrupting the noise too much. I pass. You can see there we're just sharpening things up a little bit. That's okay. So that's just giving it a little bit of a sharpen. If I turn that layer off. If I turn it back on. You can just see that little bit of clarity, particularly on the Terminator. So what we'll do now then. That's our sharp image. That's control shell up E. That makes everything the same then. And we will now do our adjustments. Hue saturation. We'll increase the saturation by 20%. Let's add another one. You can start to see the colour coming up now. It's gone a little bit yellower up here. We'll add another one. Starting to get the yellows and blues just starting to appear now. Nothing dramatic. Just keep on adding it. If you do this all at once, if you just go straight up to 80%, it just goes horribly pixelated. So we're starting to see the yellows now. And I love this part here around Mare Tranquillitatis, which is this very light grey region, but this very dark blue, but you get this real mix around the, round, around the boundary. I think probably just one or two more will probably do it. So that's really starting to show some beautiful colours there. Blues, yellows, oranges, greys. And that's all the different surface topography. I think that's going to do. And of course if you think you've over processed it, you can just turn the layers off and go back a few stages. Now I stupidly forgot to, before I started this off, make sure the levels were all the same, the colour was correct, if that takes into account the white balance, the effect of the atmosphere, the effect of the camera, the effect of the telescope. So I'm just going to quickly go back to my flattened layer, layer 1, and go 
uh, enhance auto colour correction. Oh, it's just made everything a little bit more uniform. You can really see that blues and yellows now. So there we are, there we have that colour image of the lunar surface. And I find it amazing that with our garden telescopes, with setting up outside, you know, we can actually image the chemical composition of the lunar surface. So if you look at that there, we've got blues and reds, different types of um, lava regions, different mineral compositions of the lunar surface. And you can see really where regions start mixing. So if you look along here, this is the corner between Mare Fecunditatis and Mare Tranquillitatis, Sea of Tranquillity, I can't remember what Fecunditatis, but anyway, whatever that sea is there, you can see you've got different compositions of the lunar surface literally joining here. And if I show you a high resolution shot, you know, you can see different textures in the surface. And you can see where craters have impacted and the ejector blankets now cover and have disrupted that surface topography. So wonderful. So there's our map of the moon. You can see we've got some number of quite bright regions looking at that. So I'm just going to adjust that with the levels. So choose the top layer and we're going to go Control Shift Alt E. And we shall now go Control L. There's the level. So you can see there we're peaking on the right. So let's just knock those ones down ever so slightly. things just look a little bit better let's okay that so I think that looks rather pretty and I love the different textures different colors in that surface last thing I'm going to do then is just do a gentle denoise filter noise reduce noise so here is the reduce noise window So that de-noise, although it was quite savage, has actually reduced that noise significantly. So there we have it, a geological colour enhanced map of the lunar surface. And resolution details. So 100% is fine. So 100% patience. Oh! Bye mate! You're right, how are you doing? Yes, good, thank you. Can I leave that with you? Yes, of course, I'd like to sit. Brilliant. Oh, I'm still recording, you wally. <laughs>